Great day to be in Plattsburgh, New York, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. Thank you all for coming. <coughs> Our agenda is pretty uh, straightforward, as, as Matt mentioned. I'm John Bean with uh, BN Planning Design. And uh, a little personal note I'm also a uh, former resident slash former student at Plattsburgh State just a few, many years ago. And fond, fond memories, and it's great to be working here. It's a real pleasure and a privilege and to work. It's such a great team. The Saratoga Associates is the fine consultant on the project. Emily Gardner, Dan Shearer here. It's, I want to say that the, this plan has really come from the city in so many ways. From the public, the ideas and the vision came from really largely from the committee that we work with and the staff. Uh, and they've really been, really, I'd say, co authors, maybe even primary authors of a lot of the plan, especially the, uh, the strategic. Recommendations in terms of the vision and all those objectives within the policy guides. And so we really appreciate the partnership and working together. So our agenda is pretty straightforward. I'm going to overview the process to date briefly. We're going to take a look at the draft comprehensive plan. It's going to be at a very high level. Okay, so there's a lot in there, and uh, 
a lot about the plan, as Matt had mentioned and the mayor mentioned, it's really a lot about uh, moving forward and what kind of uh, strategic recommendations are there for action. <coughs> it's all about looking forward. And uh, I would say looking forward is not just a uh, statement about, it's not passive, it's an active statement about looking forward as well. So I think we've already met the, the folks here that are some of the key uh, authors of the project. And as a, as a big picture, look forward, that's what a comprehensive plan is. It's, and really what's important about it is it's a long-term, says it's updated about every 10 years or so. I think as the mayor mentioned, it's quite a bit behind. It's uh, a good plan is based on your local values, right? It's also um, strategic in that it, it doesn't, we don't write laws with the plan. We, the plan is about writing important recommendations for the different aspects or elements of the city that need attention. And I think when you see the recommendations, if you haven't seen them, you'll, you'll see that they really respond to the city, the setting, and you also, I think you'll find them to be quite familiar in terms of the setting of the city. So we've had a great team, the mayor, the council, the community development office, the project advisory committee was very robust, had a lot of great discussions with that. We had a lot of different uh, public outreach uh, sessions online, as well as uh, you know, we had some in-person in meetings. And uh, as I mentioned, we, uh, one of the things the committee did early on was uh, we asked the committee to respond to questions or topics about the future, what they envisioned for the city. And we asked things like, we left kind of a half finished sentence, like our streets and pedestrian systems will be blank, right? And that was really wonderful opportunity for the committee members to put their thoughts into it. And I was very impressed with the body of work and ideas that came out of it. So rather than having like a short, trite, like vision statement, you see in other plans, which I call them, you know, kind of you know, apple pie and motherhood, which are wonderful things. But they really are almost the same for every community. The vision statement that we wrote is several pages long. And it's very explicit regarding the, uh, these recommendations. And the vision that the committee had, which we wrapped into and debated, into something we think is something that really is unique and something to be, of which to be proud. I'm going to read one of this, one of the, the I think it's the final sentence of the plan. Now here's our, I just, uh, here's our, uh, this is the process, the two-year process that we went through. I guess that's fine. I'm sorry, what's that? Oh, thank you. There, yes, thanks. Thanks, Emily. This is our community is well positioned to continue to offer an excellent quality of life for current residents and to be among the sought after destination for new residents. Whether seeking a great education in a beautiful setting or seeking refuge from devastating weather, climate events, or refuge from political injustice, discover Plattsburgh. We will be glad you did. So the beginning of the plan is a community snapshot of just kind of the setting of the, of the city, the demographics, land use, and that ties to another parallel document, which was developed by the city as well, which is the local waterfront revitalization program. And the waterfront <coughs> almost covers the entire city between the lake and the Saranac River, the boundaries. Uh, and so that has an in-depth look at environmental resources, natural resources, and opportunities to um, revitalize the city. So this is just an overview of the vision, but it's really, part of it is to create a, a vibrant community that's walkable, right? That is fundable for housing, renewable energy, 
Unfortunately, the city has a great source of that. It's the heart of the North Country and the micropolitan destination city, preserving your culture, identity. And if you look around in the businesses that are here, you have a nice mix of local entrepreneurs and international companies in, in such a small micropolitan city. You know, when, you, when, when I think of Flat Spring, I don't know about you, but and I'm sure you'll agree, I can't think of a city that has more world-class assets than Flat Spring, from a natural resources point of view, right? Between Lake Champlain, Saranac River, and Adirondack Mountains, the Green Mountains, and then you look at the setting that you've got Burlington, Vermont, you have Montreal, you have North Quebec, Canada, and you have Manhattan, New York City, you know, within a striking distance of the music drive, boat ride, right? So what a setting. And I think of what cities in the United States, there's maybe a handful. Uh, Boulder, Colorado comes to mind. And so what, what a great set of cards, if you would, that this, the community has been dealt, you know, and has helped build. And so this is a great basis upon which to build a plan so these policy guides, and this really is the work of the city staff to really <coughs> dig a little bit deeper and to, to look at these different aspects of the city, natural resources, community resources, recreation, arts, culture, history, housing, economic development. And these guides would be helpful as the city looks at a, a future projects, both that the city takes on itself, that others take on, that the city fosters, debates, and decides what uh, these are going to be. These are very helpful. And there's some core characteristics that you can read upon. Characteristic of sustainability, right? And uh, sustainability is meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I think, to me, a great example of sustainability is how they're starting to manage, starting to the fisheries in our oceans, where we had. We had a sustainable past, and then we learned how to mine the ocean. So we learned how to harvest far more fish than the oceans can produce. And we've also damaged the areas where the fisheries breed. So now we're realizing that we need to slow down the harvesting. We need to nurture the habitats so that that can sustain us. So that's a good to me example, great example of what sustainability means. Okay, the local level is a different type of actions, but that's what we're talking about. Diversity, what a great natural cultural history, celebrating that. And not only that, not only for human rights, but also for economic vitality. Folks are going to come here to celebrate what the city has its history, culture, resilience, promoting strong infrastructure, recognizing the natural systems that exist, and vibrancy, building upon that heritage, creating activities for folks around that. So here, I'm just going to kind of give you a, a, just a sample of some of the objectives that are written into the plan. Each of these uh, sections, if you would, is, is fairly in depth. For example, this, like I said, these small things should be pretty obvious, right? And familiar. We improve and protect the quality of Lake Champlain, the Saranac River, and the city's watersheds, natural areas, and open spaces. Well, that makes a lot of sense, right? But there's a lot. So there's a lot of folks have been doing for many years, and there's much more that, that can be done and needs to be done in these areas. Fortunately, again, if you look at if you look at the city, you look at the landscape, you look at the river, for example, you'll find that most of the river is, has a green edge. Most of the river isn't very. Uh, there's been some interaction. There's been some pollution. There's been some issues with the river. But all in all, you look at a lot of other rivers that outlet into other bodies of water across the nation and the world, and you'll see much more damage to landscapes than you have. The same with the lake. So you're in a good you're in a good position to respond to this cost effectively, not just as an uh, environmental protection channel, but also as an opportunity um, to create um, access and other uh, improvements to that um, infrastructure. Great example is the Saranac Trail, the Montreal River Trail. I think it's a great vision to go all the way up to the mountains, right? That's wonderful. I think the other communities have embraced that as well, which is great. 
this is a quote that came out of the, uh, the grant work that the city of New office is working on. And this goes to not just uh, infrastructure projects for the point of the infrastructure needs itself, but also as an opportunity to leverage other, other investments in economic development and other community goals, whether the community recreation, community education, historic preservation. So it's a community of, of not just physical resources, but relationships. One of the most important relationships, among others, is with the institutions. And one of the institutions, one of the more important institutions from, from a lot of point of views is the State University of New York Plattsburgh, right? And strengthening this relationship would be what we feel is that something is really great importance for this. We'll talk a little bit more about that. This is really important. And not just to the class, but one of the community college, the high school, et cetera. Student class break is a big, is a big, uh, big impact in the city. Estimated $55 million a year of spending on schools at the university here in the city. That's what economists call a transfer rate. So that's, for, for the most part, money coming into the city, right? That circulates around, some of it disappears. But that goes around the community. And that's really, really important for uh, economic development. Uh, recreation is, is really important. I know the mayor has is, is, uh, really wanted us to emphasize this as well. Uh, expanding parks and trails, not just by the city, but in partnership with others, right? The town of Plattsburgh, the county, the state, against these parts of the infrastructure. More and more of us are going to Want these resources, want these assets to exist. And so, as, they, uh, as they're created, I feel like they can continue to folks here feel that they'll be used and treasured. Right? So, these are important. And these regional, these partnerships are going to be important too. For example, recreational program, right? A lot of them are that bigger perspective, it's not just the city residents, but uh, other area residents can benefit from it. Partnerships on these programs. Arts and culture. What a great, what a great art scene there is here. But there's the arts are really important for, the, for a lot of reasons. Interestingly, if you think about arts in New York State, the arts are one of the economic drivers of the New York State economy. The epicenter, of course, is New York City and Manhattan. It's all going to have to be here. It's really, really good. There's performing arts and all kinds of arts. It's a great, it's important to pick up the historic resources of the city and our crisis. Promoting and protecting these. Just not for their own good, but also uh, for the economic development of other aspects. We all need a place to live, and housing is a big part of the plan. And um, the idea of fostering housing that can serve all of us in the every stage of our lives is, 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 is an important part of this plan. So then that would mean looking ahead, planning ahead, and enabling that kind of. Uh, housing and taking advantage of what the city has. The economic development aspects of the plan are um, also um, focused on natural resources, the assets that we have, as well as the, um, the resources of the region. The town of Pittsburgh, the county, the county. Folks can help with this are some of the agencies, right? Department of Transportation has on these federal highway funds and others that can be used to improve pedestrian and environment, enhance the look and feel of the gateways that you have to come into the city. Right? Um, I don't think anybody has to fall. I don't think we're getting any postcards, for example, on that part of the street right now. 
the region. So that's not where you take that money shot. You yeah. come down here to the water or some little part of town. But I know that folks like Saratoga Associated Cities, yeah, you know, planners, you know, can envision and you all can envision what that could be, right? I don't think anybody here back then would have said, oh, that's my vision for Carmel history 40 years ago or 50 years ago when that process started, right? So there are ways to you know, kind of grow the diets and other things that can be done to make that, make that you know, work better and safer. So one of the big parts of the player is land use and zoning. Right? These are, uh, this is kind of a regulatory toolkit sometimes uh, both in development. Uh, to do zoning without to do kind of, without a plan, it kind of doesn't make sense. Or you build a building without that it's not really good. So, so that's what this plan does. Uh, and so here's some of the guidelines in the comprehensive plan about the zoning. Which is going to be something that's going to move forward with. One of the ideas is the 15 minute neighborhood. It's really an old classic. It's kind of a traditional thought that within 15 minutes from where you live, how many of the things that you need in your neighborhood might be the access, right? And the city has a lot of that. To, to go back to that, because that's going to become important in the future, not to retain track can live here through all the stages of our life. So, um, that's an economic advantage. So, yeah, that's going to something to keep in mind. And it would take some understanding and conversation, I think, among neighbors about what does that mean in terms of the kind of uses that we'll have in your neighborhood. Reflect modern community principles. And, um, one of those that I think is is the idea of <clears throat> defining as a community what you want your neighborhoods and areas and places to be like. What does success look like? Do that hard work as a community to paint that picture first. It's kind of great when it, uh, if you don't have that ahead of time, you know, for uh, if you're an applicant right, coming from the city, the city doesn't know what it means. How can you fulfill it? And many times the zoning folks don't. Tell you what they what you want. They'll say what you can't do, what you what the box is, but there's no what does that look like? So that's what we're advocating this way. The big picture. So some of the guidelines that kind of bolted it out here within within. So then the plan is we almost done here. Um, in terms of implementing the plan before, what we what we did is we Look down on this, this down to some five kind of key action items. There's a lot more in the plan, but these are really uh, some of the things to focus on in the next few years. In addition to the long list of projects the city staff and the city council are already working on. The first is the zoning permit. Talk about that. The, the second is recreation system, investing in the system, and then that would be create a system of resources that meets the standards that you all would want to see. I, I can't think of a better example of property investment for the city of Glasgow than this city hall front part of the thought of investment for each of those things. You know, that's a pretty high bar, but the idea of Follow the recreation spaces to go through and do it over time. And but that's really good. And you've got those resources that with the lake that's there. So in the future, I don't think anyone has to have fights over money and arguments. I don't think anyone in the future will ever complain as you enhance these resources, for example, from the lake. Future citizens are saying, well, they spent too much money. I don't think they will. But you'll, I'm sure you'll have some discussion. You'll probably not. The third is the town down uh, partnership, town meeting the city. But this is really important, right? Because of the importance of the university, 
white flag missiles. Because there are relationships with Canada's opportunity that really is strengthening that relationship. And that relationship is not so much infrastructure, it's more human relationship between faculty, <coughs> students, businesses, cultural institutions, bringing that together. And that's going to take work and time and effort. Because let's face it, everyone's in their own world, right? The students, the faculty, and so on. But what an opportunity. Because we'd like to reverse what's going on with the numbers. University of State University of New York is seeing a decline in awareness. It's, 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 uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Pressburg is among those that they see their state university. And so that's the bad news. The good news is, right? We, we I said, wait, this is how the thing is written by you. We have an opportunity in Pressburg because of the assets that the city has. To be an outlier to I think I know this to do too. To all that track and diverse that track. An outlier that you are not that would take a lot of really big effort. But rewards are these and the rewards to the students who become the effective become increasingly valuable. Continuing downtown revitalization, that's just really important. And that extends to the lakefront. It also extends to other commercial development on the Middle East and South. Really, that the downtown is such an asset. Right on to stay, stay focused on that. And the four, fifth category is uh, community connections. Right? And that's a bigger picture concept, but really it's things like the Saturday Green Bay Trail, it's things like uh, Enhancing the connection between economic development, tourism, and your events here. Right? It's, it's strengthening all the, those kind of connections to both the local and the regional. The plan calls for strategic approach to the funding. That means being optimistic, going after these kind of priorities with funding that is available. I know member of office, we don't know if the city council mayor are doing that very aggressively. But also, that also means some of these projects are more relevant to the city fund itself because if you need to get something done, it may not be worth the time, waste if you were spent with the grant process, waiting, 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 and then getting the funding. Sometimes it just makes sense to, you know, to, to see if resources can be found to do that. So, um, and then uh, in your track, you report it. Check it back at the every, every year. There's a the city council mayor. There's a report back. What have we done? What have we done? What's been working? What are successes? What has to work? So you can keep track of this. And that's why we also made this, I think, simple five things to remember. I don't know if you, but I can't remember. If you, I can maybe remember three. But five things because it. I think there needs to be something that, as an administrator or some kind of administrator, one of the other I don't know these good things. And that, I think, sets this plan apart. We have to honor it. And I think it would be powerful, right? Because if you have a plan that says 40 things to do, that's not very strategic. And, you know, there may be 40 things that are important to do, but these are the big, big areas. And within these, there, there's other, you know, others can merge. Basically. So in terms of moving forward, some of the next steps are getting feedback of the plan. What do we like? You know, what's, what's, we think we're on track to do it. Revise the plan is required. In terms of implementing, there's a zoning amendment piece or a small piece that's going to come into this plan. That's going to be more design guideline based than the way to code for the city as <coughs> Sure, consistency with the local waterfront revitalization program, that's the LWRP, which is already there's a draft that that's going to be we will review the adopted can do this and um, present those together um, for review. And so that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Appreciate it very much. There's some emails, but I would, I would, there's our emails, but I would suggest going through. Uh, so, 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 so.
So that's this point in the map. Questions, yeah, uh, just uh, I'll just give the uh, folks here a brief update on uh, where some of those priority projects stand. Uh, the LRAP, the comp plan, and a, uh, a limited update of the city zoning code is all being completed under the auspices of this one grant. Um, because the city zoning code is, is so out of date and is in such dire need of updating. And I'd like to thank the, uh, the members of the city council who are here today, who just within the last few weeks uh, dedicated $250,000 in city funding for a complete rewrite of our zoning ordinance and our uh, subdivision ordinance, which will be taking place somewhat in concert with this work here, but that will uh, lay a lot of the groundwork for future growth and development in the city. And uh, other than that, I'll open up the questions and um, what you guys have thought of the draft plan and anything you'd like to see incorporated into uh, future versions. Michelle? Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Armstrong. I live at 15 Massachusetts Street in Plattsburgh, Ward 1. And I'm coordinator for the newly reestablished City Climate Task Force. It's composed of 12 community stakeholders and we are tasked with advising and supporting the city in its effort to become a, a sustainable city with a sustainable future. And we do this through carrying out actions um, in two programs, the DEC sponsored Climate Smart Communities Program and the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority or NYSERDA's Clean Energy Communities Program. We began our work in May and we are committed to helping Plattsburgh achieve certification in both of these programs by the beginning of next year. And I'd like to recognize uh, one of our members, Diana Wardall and Jennifer Talon. Dan, Jennifer, I didn't even see you sitting there. And glad you pointed it out, Diana. Uh, there are two very uh, hardworking members of the other 10 that we have and really appreciate their efforts. As I read the draft comprehensive plan, I was encouraged and proud to recognize the attention it devotes to sustainability on many fronts. I also saw alignment in significant ways to the Climate Smart Community Action Pledge Element 6, which is comprehensive plan with sustainability elements. Many of these elements are prominent in the plan and some are uh, generally captured in the two core characteristics that I was pleased to see. Plattsburgh is a sustainable city that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. That's a strong and really essential statement for our comprehensive plan to make. And it is a resilient city that promotes sustainable development that fosters a strong infrastructure. And I, as I read through the plan, I noticed all of the uh, plans for green infrastructure. And uh, so through its commitment to sustainability and resilience, Plattsburgh through, uh, fully asserts its place as a North Country leader regarding both mitigation uh, of and adaptation to the effects of climate change. So it's a realistic plan and it's a necessary plan. So to achieve Climate Smart Community credit toward pledge element six, uh, five sustainability elements are required and seven more go on to earn credit toward CSC certification. Most of these elements have been addressed in the plan, thankfully, and it will be easy to provide the state with evidence of the uh, city's commitment to them. But I'd like to update you and just give you some encouragement of how the task force 
is working on behalf of the city and making recommendations to the city and actualizing some of the climate smart community actions that tie into the plan. Uh, we're either completing some of these actions or we're initiating them. So uh, one element is support alternative modes of transportation, including strategies for bicycles, pedestrian, public transit, and electric vehicles. So the support for this is articulated throughout the plan. The city's foresight in establishing a complete streets policy in 2020 and its continued attention to fostering multimodal means of transportation has been laudable and will earn CSC credit. It's already been filed for that. A commitment to further expansion of bike and walking trails and realizing the 15 minute um, neighborhood concept is also uh, an important component of energy reduction goals. Uh, another element is decreased dependence on fossil fuels and support energy efficiency and renewable energy production. Well, you may know that the city was awarded a Climate Smart Community Grant of $30,000, which we will need to match through our efforts in order to conduct uh, greenhouse gas and fleet inventories, as well as to produce a climate action plan and fleet efficiency policy uh, with the goal of reducing energy cons consumption and greenhouse gas uh, emissions. So the climate action plan will set forth specific targets um, for energy and carbon emission reductions after the inventories are completed and uh, <coughs> current baselines are established. So this fits right in, as you can well see. So we're already on, on the way to implementing some of the ambitious goals of the plan. And the task force is pleased to assist in these efforts. Uh, Minimize solid waste is another element of uh, this particular action, including strategies to promote recycling and composting or anaerobic digestion of organic materials. Uh, you may know that in 2019, uh, two recycling policies, one for government buildings and the other for public spaces and events was uh, passed. Mayor Rosenquist and I are currently working to fully implement these policies to, in order to receive uh, Climate Smart Community credit. A task force is working on a plan for organics, uh, sorry, organics composting in government buildings and will soon present its recommendations to the mayor and council. Uh, another element is promote adaptation to climate change, including strategies related to land use and public education engagement. And we know that the city's um, the community's understanding of the effects of climate change is essential to developing uh, the city's strategies for adaptation. And a working group um, is headed by um, Jennifer Tallon is planning a public uh, education and engagement event in the fall. And also guided by NYSERDA's clean energy community requirements, another group is developing a public uh, outreach campaign to promote heat pumps and or electric vehicles. And that's uh, Diana Wardal is participating in that group. So both the Climate Smart Community and Clean Energy Community programs are valuable resources that the city can draw upon to implement the sustainability elements of its comprehensive plan. I'll share the document, I've shared the document with uh, Director Miller that will guide my effort to document the plan's alignment with Climate Smart Community goals. You, uh, this group, I admire your work, You've done all your homework and I have no doubt consulted many experts and sources, but 
If you'd like to consult specific climate smart community references, links uh, to resources and best practices are presented in the document I gave Matt. I'll leave you with what I hope is among the highest compliments you received tonight. And that uh, comes from a discussion I had with our regional uh, climate smart community coordinator, Erin Griffin. Uh, and she remarked, the goals in Plattsburgh's plan are progressive, forward thinking, and generally aligned with climate smart community goals. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, anyone else like to comment? I would like to say, you know, that a lot of work has been done on the comprehensive master plan. And I do also acknowledge to thank the council for uh, funding the much needed zoning code rewrite that is going to be critical in implementing uh, a lot of what we talked about in the comprehensive master plan. Uh, as, as, as we've heard over the last several years, and as we uh, kind of do business in the city of Blackford, uh, there's a concern or some complaint that the city doesn't have the developable land. Um, Although it does seem that we are a bit landlocked, it does seem that the opportunity for sprawl and that kind of development is limited. We have opportunity to do infill development, which is much more difficult style of development uh, within a municipality as densely, as densely uh, packed as we are. However, we do have opportunity for them. And that's what the zoning code rewrite presents itself. That's what the comprehensive master plan identifies. Not only uh, developable property uh, that's owned by the city of Flatford that we have the potential to uh, turn over to private development, which generates tax revenue and generates opportunities for housing and, and business development and growth, but also the encouragement, uh, as we've seen in this in this process, the encouragement of identifying privately owned properties that are potentially underdeveloped or that could be developed or utilized for the same opportunity for housing. Uh, and, uh, Housing, as we all know, is also a critical factor uh, that we are trying to solve. Uh, although we don't have all of the uh, tools aligned and all of the, uh, the solutions in hand, there is definitely a mindset uh, in the city of Platteford to take a, a, a bit of a more aggressive approach to solving this problem. And again, that is also addressed in this comprehensive master plan as well as the zoning program that's to come. Uh, facilitate the development of more housing and all even alternative forms of housing like uh, access for dwelling units, uh, smaller properties that uh, mother in law, more like what we've called what we used to call the mother in law uh, kinds of properties uh, or kinds of development. These are, these are opportunities for us to start to address uh, not only the, the, the development and economic growth in the city of West, but also to address the housing issues. Uh, thank you for that, Rochelle. I know that you all have been doing fantastic work, um, not only on behalf of the city of Plaster, but on behalf of each generation that ever was moving, uh, that you all have taken on this task uh, with uh, the, the, the uh, amount of uh, aggression that you have. And we need that. And it's, if we had done this 30 years ago with the same amount of fervor, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right, we'd be having a different conversation about environment and climate change and, and uh, what, what we need to take care of our, of our, our environment. And we're lucky to be here in the city of Blackbird and in this region, quite protected from the extreme weather events that we've just faced. And so um, it's even more important to do this now uh, than trying to chase our families in the future. So, again, I really appreciate uh, the work that you all have done. It's been two years in the making. Right, and uh, it's finally coming to fruition, and it's really appreciated and, and it has been needed for the last 30, 30 years or so uh, for the city of Blaster. So I appreciate it. Yeah. And I'd also like to add uh, just to introduce our new senior planner, Alicia Bartlett, who just joined the city last week. Uh, she's got a, a long and, and very history in, in various planning disciplines. Um, a fresh set of eyes on this plan as we work towards a final version of it is going to be great. And she's also going to be playing a critical role in that larger zoning and subdivision rewrite that we were discussing earlier. So please welcome her all to the city. Uh, any other comments or any other questions uh, from the folks in attendance here tonight? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Hi, I'm Laura Palkovic. I live up on Champlain Street, about uh, four blocks west of here. And I'm glad, Chris, that you addressed the, acknowledged the, the limited, really downtown, much of downtown people we have. I, I was here in college in 1974. I graduated and I left for a long time and I came back and got married. And um, so I've been here almost 25 years again. And one of the things I've always noticed about the limitation of our downtown is that it's narrow and it's long. And I was like, well, what are we gonna do about that? And when you started addressing that, that maybe some westward rezoning, re re because in my mind, if we do progress with this, that in, I don't know, 30 or 40 years, my house could disappear and become part of downtown. But to my mind, that would be part of the natural progression. That all of the town, all of the, the buildings that are to the west of us, um, they may have to undergo metamorphoses or removal or new buildings, but that will happen if we do get the influx of you know, new people coming in who want to live here. And I, Mr. Bean, you're talking about uh, you know, the assets of the climate. And yes, I've noticed that this past few years. Winters haven't been as bad. And we're very, very fortunate this summer that we're not suffering from the high, high heat. So, so many parts of the country, we're not dealing with fires as so many other places are. We're not dealing with flood. We're not dealing with the crazy weather. And it's like we're almost in a blessed little pocket between here and like Burlington. And we are fortunate and it would be something that would be nice to share with other people coming in and giving them a place to live. But I do have a question of a phrase that came up and I wanted to ask you about that. You talked about the asset of climate. Um, there's an economic asset I think you also mentioned that we have a diversity of small and large businesses. And then you use the phrase refuge from political injustice. And I'm wondering, I don't quite understand what you were referring to at that point um, and how our city is poised to um, be, a, be, I suppose, a refuge for people. But what I don't understand quite what you were talking about when you said political injustice. And if you could help me out with that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. I would, I, thank you. Thank you for your comments and thoughts. Um, welcome back to Plattsburgh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll come back too. Um, I think just just uh, that those were that came from one of the committee members. Okay, and uh, I think the thought, the th if I might, you know, uh, I think just uh, whatever reason folks want to come to Plattsburgh, they're all good. Right. And uh, just there's a lot, uh, a lot of our history of our nation is about folks coming to America for some type of refuge from injustice, right? Whether it's put religious freedom, right? Uh, or uh, more recent events in the world or even nearby. Right? So I think uh, my sense is like many small towns, but you know, we're, we're, our constitution is based on freedom and tolerance, right? So it's a, we're, it seems like a welcome, Plattsburgh, folks in the community felt Plattsburgh was a welcoming community. So I think embracing that and you know, being part of that welcoming is really important. Not, and selfishly, as the, our population ages, we need folks, we need uh, the next generation to come, you know? Uh, the, Ad the Adirondacks in general were a little bit different. But, uh, in upstate New York, we're, 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 uh, demographics are working against us in terms of an aging population. You can see the signs on the street, help wanted. There's not enough workforce. So I think uh, there's room for growth in the city and the mayor. And it's not gonna be simple and easy. Info is the toughest, but it's also some of the neatest kind of development and it's, the kind that will add value. So we've got some chance. That's a, that's really what we were talking about. I think uh, also with us on our side, a long history with the university, yeah. because it 
has always welcomed students who are not traditionalists. A lot of students come from downstate, from the Kansas, but they become the new source of positive presence. I, I think right. that's because I came from California. I stayed here for many years. So, so I wrote a little piece. It's it's it it, uh, it didn't make the cut for the plan because there was too many words and ideas in it. But a little piece about Boulder, and I because I was wondering when I was there, my uh, last time I was there, I do think of the parallels. Why did Boulder get Google? Why did Google go to Boulder? Right. Well, and the reason is students, two former students, when they were students at the time. They're architecture students. Like I tell the story of you know, cut me up, Matt. No, no, please go ahead. <laughs> so I'll let my hook up upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so they're architecture students, and they they were frustrated. They they, were, they wanted a simple way to illustrate buildings in three dimensions so they can play with ideas, right? So they ended up creating this software that was really easy for everybody to use, and that ended up being called SketchUp. Right, and you may have heard of it. It's a very, very popular piece of software, right? I'm sure you and you know, any and uh, SketchUp was purchased by a company that makes all these high-tech survey instruments, Trimble. They bought it, but then folks in Google, some came from Google, the next day came to town. You need to meet these people. These two folks who started this company became a multi-million-dollar company. And they stayed in Boulder and they did their thing in Boulder. That's so Google came and said, wow, look at all these tech smart, cool young people in Boulder. And they're here because of these two young people, just two people started it. And that's Google came. And now I think it's 800,000 people, maybe more, built a new building, you know. And so here's this, you know, folks coming in, folks have come from all over. So I'm optimistic for the city that, that there's relationships with the university and others, someone like you or someone like, Anybody else, you know, can, you know, bring more, you know, folks to get excited about that school. Yeah. That's, that's really what they decided really wanted to convey was last word is welcoming. You know, most of upstate New York had you know, just a brain drain. You know, a lot of schools would start to think it's here. Why not here? Why not? Do a lot more with respect to telecommuting, virtual work, all these things. Why can't this be the next goal? That's kind of what we look at. And I think you know, points of tolerance and you know, sustainability, they will really get home with people that are considering the place to live. Anything else? Any other questions? Thank you all for being here. Maybe anything else? You're, it's a great, it's a, what a great team. You, got, you know, I can't believe such a small office could produce such a great document. I think you guys should get a round of applause. Well, I'm Ms. Marbet, our planning assistant behind me, our former planners, uh, Ethan Vinson and Melana Tamer as well, who all contributed greatly to this plan. So yes. thank you to them as well. Absolutely. And thank you everyone for coming and we will certainly uh, be in touch with all of you as this process moves towards presenting a final plan to the Council for their review and hopefully adoption. Thank you all very much. Thank you.